So hello and welcome to the Open Education Network Summit. Thank you for joining us today's, uh, for today's first session entitled Engaging Students in OER Promotion Through Experiential Learning, a Case Study of an OER Team and Public Relations Class Partnership. My name is Tanya Groves and I'm the Director of Educational Programs for the Open Ed Network. If you're not familiar with us, the OEN, we're a community of higher ed organizations working together to make education more equitable, accessible, and affordable through open education. You can learn more about us at open.umn.edu forward slash OEN, and I'll put that in the chat uh, after I'm done introducing. Before we begin, the OEN is housed at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, which is located on traditional, ancestral, and contemporary lands of indigenous people. The university resides on Dakota land seated in the treaties of 1837 and 1851. We acknowledge this place has a complex and layered history. This land acknowledgement is just one of the ways in which we work to educate the campus and community about this land and our relationships with it and each other. We are committed to ongoing efforts to recognize, support, and advocate for American Indian nations and peoples, and we thank them for their persistence through a violent history. Please feel free to acknowledge the indigenous people to whom the land you are situated on belongs in the chat if you feel so inclined. I'll now be handling this, handing this session off to Carla Myers from Miami University. Carla is a member of the Summit Planning Committee and she will introduce the session and monitor the chat. Hi everybody and welcome. We have a few housekeeping things before we get started. This webinar is being recorded. For that reason, you've been muted. The video transcripts and slides will be posted on the OEM's 2021 YouTube Summit playlist after the summit is concluded. And uh, after my introduction, I will place a link to that in our chat. The last 10 to 15 minutes of today's session will be for questions. To submit a question for our presenters, please use the Q&A feature in Zoom. We will not have a chance to ask all the questions to presenters, but we'll try our best to get through as many as we can. The chat will be a space to share additional comments or reactions. Um, we are committed to providing a friendly, safe, and welcoming environment for all attendees. You can learn more about the community norms of the Open Education Network um, online, and I will share a link to the community norms document here in a second. The hashtag for the summit is hashtag OEN Summit 21. Please join us on Twitter at OpenEd underscore network. Now, please join me in welcoming today's presenters. Beth Martin is the Open Educational Resources Librarian at Western Michigan University, WMU. In her position, she oversees an adoption grant program for faculty and instruct instructors. She is an active member of WMU's OER task force, running monthly meetings for the group. This spring, Beth coordinated WMU's first ever OER symposium held during Open Education Week 2021. Prior to coming to WMU, Beth held leadership positions at Grand Valley State University, Finleyana University, and Lake Linden Hubble School Public Library. She lives in Grand Rapids, Michigan with her husband, who is also a librarian, two sons, two cats, and her dog. Dr. Anna Popkova is Assistant Professor of Communication at Western Michigan University School of Communication. She teaches courses on public relations and strategic communication and conducts research on international strategic and political communication. Dr. Popkova's teaching philosophy emphasizes open pedagogy and experimental learning, giving students many opportunities to collaborate with a variety of local organizations every semester. Michelle Baer serves as instruction and outreach librarian as part of the social sciences liaison team at Western Michigan University Libraries. She has been employed at WMU Library since 2001 and has held the rank of professor since 2015. Before her time at WMU, she worked at the University of Michigan, Carnegie Mellon University, Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and nonprofit organizations in Atlanta, Georgia, and Denver, Colorado. She received both undergraduate degrees and masters in information and library science from the University of Michigan. And Sarah Volming, who is Volmering, excuse me, who is the marketing manager for Western Michigan University Libraries. She received her undergraduate degree and an MA in organizational leadership and performance from WMU. Sarah has worked extensively in libraries for the past decade in both public services and administrative roles and uses that experience to elevate and promote libraries to a variety of audiences. 
So please join me in welcoming our presenters and I will turn the presentation over to them. Thank you, Carla, for the introductions. Uh, welcome everyone to our presentation. Um, I'm just gonna go over what, okay, I'm giving you an overview of what we're gonna talk about today. So in our presentation, we will go over the founding of Western Michigan University's OER Task Force and the continued goals and some of our challenges the task force faces, especially with marketing and outreach. I will discuss our marketing efforts prior to the collaboration with COM 4500, the capstone course. Uh, Dr. Popkova will discuss the experiential and service learning components and the collaboration that we had with her students um, and, 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 well, and their client, which was the OER task force. And then lastly, we're going to just talk about what recommendations the students had given us and what our next steps will be. And um, yeah, and based upon the students' findings. So Western Michigan University is a public research university in Kalamazoo, Michigan. It has a full-time equivalent enrollment of about 19,000 students and about 1,400 faculty, give or take. In the fall of 2017, uh, Western Michigan University founded the OER Task Force in order to promote adoption, adaption, and the creation of open education resources in order to reduce costs of textbooks for students. The makeup of the uh, task force uh, has faculty and staff within and outside of the libraries, um, but I'm uh, campus members. So uh, early on, the task force offered workshops for faculty just to give general information about OER and um, how they can use it. Um, that kind of rolled into um, a grant that we provide uh, every year. It's an adoption grant for $1,000 for faculty. Um, it started in the fall of 2019, and Dr. Anna Popkova was one of our recipients. So she is a champion of OER um, on our campus, and we are happy to have partnered with her, and I'll go over that in a moment. Um, Let's see, and so we, we have this adoption grant and we'll be offering it again in the fall. So we have also have launched two surveys. One was in 2019 and the spring and summer semester. And the other was just launched this past April. The surveys were for faculty and it was really to gauge their perceptions of open education resources uh, within their field. So um, I wanted to mention that the first year, and one of the reasons why we did our collaboration with Dr. Popkova's class, because the first year we ran the survey, we only had 45 faculty participants. Now, some of that could have been because of, because of other surveys being put out by the university. They weren't uh, able to launch the survey until the summer session, and not many faculty are really around in the summer. However, we did launch it again this spring. We launched it for the whole month of April and uh, we only got 75 participants. So um, we wanna continue doing this grant every, I mean, this survey, I'm, excuse me, this survey every two years. So, and we're hoping that um, it will become more popular and people will participate more. Um, because as I noted, one of our challenges with the task force is really around promotion and marketing. Um, especially of our campus-wide events. And Carla did mention last spring, we did have a campus-wide OER symposium that was fairly successful. I would have to say, Sarah, will go over some of that. Um, but the task force has really been working with Sarah over the years to do our marketing, our strategic marketing. And um, I will turn over the presentation to Sarah as she will tell us about the marketing strategies of the task force. Thanks, Beth. So marketing support for the OER task force is provided by the university libraries. Um, and we work with the task force um, in 2019 to develop a sort of comprehensive marketing plan to address the goals, um, the, the initial goals that have been set for OER, both by the libraries and the task force. 
So goals are the heart of a marketing plan. It really sets what we want to accomplish, what we're trying to, what we're trying to do, what, what results do we want to see. And so our goals for the initial plan were to increase awareness of OER and also launch the OER adoption grant for faculty and instructors. And um, that's where that survey that Beth mentioned really came into play is to kind of give us a, a baseline, even though the response was low, it did show us kind of where are people at in their OER, you know, being aware of OER and what, how they're using OER currently. So based on these goals, we identif identified faculty and instructors as our primary audience for OER um, for two reasons, really. One, they're the ones eligible to apply for the grant, which is one of the main goals of our plan. And then secondly, they're one of the primary drivers of change in terms of OER adoption. They'll select existing OERs to adopt or develop their own um, in most cases. So as, but as the campaign started, we also added an additional audience to our plan, which was administrators, which includes VPs, deans, and department chairs. Now, communicating with our administrators was always a part of our plan, but we positioned them more as a potential partner than an audience themselves. So as the campaign started rolling out, we realized that we needed to know more, that they needed to know more, excuse me, about benefits of OER for our campus so that we could help get their support and they could become advocates and help us share information with our primary, primary audience, which was faculty and instructors at Western. So in terms of tactics, and when I say tactics, I mean what actions we actually took to help achieve our campaign goals. Um, by far the most impactful tactics for faculty were email, and that includes both university-wide like, news digests, outreach emails from our liaison librarians, uh, messages forwarded by deans and department chairs, um, presentations at meetings or workshops like the ones that Beth mentioned were also an impactful in sharing what OER is um, and giving people kind of baseline information about, you know, how they could use it in their classes. The website was also very important, both the University Library's website, the OER webpage, and um, online platforms like eLearning. It, by placing um, information about the OER grants and OER in general in e-learning, it put that information right where instructors are already delivering content to students. So it was a really great placement for us that was really impactful. Um, next slide, please. Like many things, our plan was disrupted by COVID-19. Um, some tactics were not implemented as our library was closed by state executive orders, and we all rapidly shifted to delivering our services and classes in uh, distance remote learning. Um, we did find opportunities, however, to position OER as a potential solution to some of the challenges facing instructors teaching remotely during the summer. Um, as maybe some of you have also experienced, uh, students and instructors were sharing with us some of the challenges that they had, which included supply chain disruptions and shipping delays for textbooks, and also challenges in transitioning face-to-face -face activities to an online environment. So we were able to position OER as a potential solution to these challenges, which helped keep some momentum going despite that disruption. This fall, we did renew our energies once again, as once we were back into uh, settling into kind of a new normal, we'll call it. Uh, and I think that our faculty, our audience had more space to consider OER once again. So we did do another round of grants this fall. And as Beth mentioned, we did host a um, OER online symposium that was quite successful in March. Um, and both of these activities really helped us continue to build awareness for OER and increase adoptions through the grants. That being said, as the opportunity came up to partner with the COM 4500 class and actually work with students going into PR and communications, one of the questions in our mind was what was the role of students in promoting OER at WMU? They were included in the scope of our original plan. It really focused heavily on faculty and instructors and administrators. Um, so we were eager to see what the COM 4500 class might make of a new potential audience and how they might involve students in their campaigns. And I'm gonna now turn this over to Anna to talk about the Com 4500 experience. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, thank you all for, for coming to our presentation. And I just wanna say a special, special greeting, special hi to the University of Minnesota. I didn't include it in my bio, but it's actually an alma mater for me. I got my master's and my PhD there. So University of Minnesota, 
holds a very special place in my heart. So it's nice to, uh, it was a nice kind of like, oh yeah, uh, today. So as Beth mentioned, um, I, yeah, I'm uh, a faculty member in the School of Communication at Western and I teach courses on strategic communication and public relations. And um, of course, um, uh, as Beth also mentioned, I was one of the grant recipients of OER last year. Um, I converted my other class, not the one that I'm gonna talk about today, but the introductory class to public relations to be 100% OER based. I love the uh, spirit and the idea of OER and um, in general, um, uh, accessibility of education and openness is fundamental to my teaching philosophy. And another thing that that is really crucial and is a cornerstone of my teaching philosophy is this idea of experiential learning. And the course, the COM 4500 course, which is um, uh, public relations campaigns, is entirely based on uh, the idea of experiential learning. A little bit about the course itself. This is a, a senior capstone course in public relations. So it is for senior graduating or almost graduating seniors in PR who are, uh, this course gives them a chance to take everything that they've learned in their courses uh, so far and, and apply them and really uh, practice the skills, showcase their skills and, and apply them to the specific project that they're doing with a community partner, with an organization that, that I choose usually uh, to develop a public relations and communication outreach campaign that would help uh, the client, the organization achieve their, their goals, what, what they want to do. So um, to the way I teach this class and of course the model itself when we partner with a community organization um, is based in this idea of experiential learning, which is really in a nutshell about, you know, it is about learning by doing. And in a um, field like public relations and strategic communication, it is particularly important, it's a very applied field. So it is particularly important to give students that experience, to give them a chance to bridge theory and practice, to give them a chance to make something, produce something that will give them uh, a taste of what it's like to actually then work in that field and engage with various audiences and address various communication needs of of different organizations. So experiential learning is based in this cycle that I have here on this uh, picture that everything starts with the concrete experience. So you, you have an actual experience and then the other parts are particularly important. So it's not just you know, going and having an experience, no. Then it's followed by reflective observation. So you have an experience and then you engage in reflection and meaningful reflection you review, you think about it, you discuss, um, then it's followed by abstract conceptualization. So you learn from that experience, you draw conclusions, you, if you made, um, uh, yeah, so you, you um, discuss those uh, and think through those reflections further on, and then you take action. So active experimentation is the next stage. That's when you plan, that's when you try out what you've learned. And then it's followed again by a concrete experience. And so this is the model that is really at the root of uh, how COM 4500 public relations campaigns works. And the other element of it, next slide please, is the idea of service learning. And the idea of service learning goes along with the idea of experiential learning really well, because what service learning is, is partnering with an organization. And I have two on this diagram here, kind of two sides of it. One is um, just kind of talks about you know, what happens, right? The, the bridging of the course content with meaningful service, which is the partnership with an organization that gives us a chance to get that meaningful service and to help the organization. Uh, and yes, the critical reflection piece, that's where that alignment with experiential learning is, is visible. And in the middle, there is student learning. So that's how learning happens. Um, yes, and on the other side of this diagram, that's actually kind of the, the, the um, 
how it actually works. There's me, the instructor, there are the students, and then there's the community partner. In, in our case, last semester, uh, the OER team was our community partner. And, you know, as I already mentioned, I had the connection before. I am very passionate about uh, open education and accessible learning. And so I thought, all right, let's let's partner and let's let's see what students can come up with when it comes to um, how we can help our team and our libraries to uh, increase awareness of OER and have more and more professors adopt it and have more students be aware of it, whether they are when, when it's happening in their classes, that this is actually what they're using, or maybe um, uh, spread awareness um, on campus so that the professors also learn about it. But we'll talk about it a little later, so next slide. So this is how it actually worked, the, the actual model of the class. Uh, last semester, I had four teams and it's, it's always a smaller class because it is so hands-on and there's a lot of coaching happening one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So it's always a class is capped at 25 people. So last semester, there were four teams of five students each. And we had, we always have one client because we also follow this model of, um, we, we simulate PR agency experience when they compete for a client and they bid uh, for a client. So they design campaigns and then they, the client picks the best campaign. So this is what the course experience is also intended to, to simulate. So we always have one client and multiple teams. Uh, another interesting challenge, of course, in the spring of 2021 was that it was online and we did it fully synchronously online. We used MS Teams as our platform um, for all meetings. And of course, you know, since the teams are competing, they, they don't know what others are doing and they're not supposed to know what others are doing. So we did it with breakout rooms. That's how we navigated it. And typically, um, when it comes to communication with the client, we have four meetings with the client, four mandatory meetings that are uh, spaced out throughout the semester. The first meeting, um, that's where the client introduces themselves. So the OER team came virtually to our MS Teams virtual room and introduced themselves and talked about what they do, what they've done so far and what their goals are, what they would like help with. And students also introduced ourselves. Uh, so this is time for introductions. This is when um, the, the OER team met with all the students. We didn't do breakout rooms or anything like that. And after that meeting, students get to work. So they get a lot of information right away. They start their research. And then this, um, uh, a couple of weeks or so later, a second meeting happens. And the second meeting is when um, the client, in our case, the OER team met with each specific group of students. So they met with them separately in breakout rooms. So that way then other teams didn't know what was, what was talked about because at that point they're already starting their unique campaigns. Uh, the second meeting is followed by the same kind of one-on-one, -on -one. so um, OER team meets with each team separately. Third meeting, that one happens toward the maybe two-thirds or so through uh, into, into the semester. Uh, and then there's a final meeting, again, that's where we all meet together, and that's when students present their final campaigns to, they presented them to the OER team, and the OER team made the decision and announced the, the winner. That's the exciting meeting for students. And usually it happens during their scheduled final exam time. So it's, I usually say it's a fun final exam because they get to present the results of all the work that they've done throughout the semester. So what is the actual work then? Next slide, please. Um, let's go back a couple of slides to, yes, back. Uh, yeah, I think now we're going forward, but we need to go back. I know that. I'm sorry. I just, I can't find the arrows. I think they're at the bottom. There we go. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, the first thing, thank you. So the first uh, thing that students always start with, and this is also uh, where, you know, if you're, if you're doing PR right, PR campaigns right, communication outreach campaigns right, that's what you start with is research. Uh, lots and lots of research. And so students do both secondary and primary research. 
uh, uh, secondary research in, in our case, they reviewed the information that they found and that was available and that was provided and linked to by the team, the OER team to, to us. Um, so the, the, the any information that is out there already about OER, existing research, results of existing research, uh, anything that's written about it. Um, we also looked at the, uh, so Beth talked a little bit about the survey that, that the OER team conducted a couple of years ago. So students looked at the results of faculty survey um, they also did primary research. So every team did surveys of students uh, because that was one of the audiences they really considered and looked to looked into incorporating into their campaigns and plans. They also did interviews with, with faculty. And one of the teams also reached out beyond Western Michigan University and conducted interviews with a couple of OER experts at other colleges and universities. So that was also uh, an interesting, that was unique to their campaign. Um, so yes, yeah, so once they gather all the research and, and analyze the findings, they get to planning, the planning stage, next slide. And planning involves developing goals, objectives, strategies, and tactics for every campaign. And I just have examples here of uh, what a goal or an objective and strategy and tactics might look like, just to give you all an idea of what, um, it, obviously there were, we had four goals because there were four campaigns and way more objectives than that. But for example, one of the campaigns had the goal of increasing faculty use of OER at WMU by 10 professors by January, 2020, uh, yes, 2022. And so, so one of the objectives, for example, that was supporting that goal was to increase the implementation of OER in gen ed courses by having five more professors teaching those gen ed courses adopt OER by January 2022. So this was an interesting approach to audience segmentation where they really thought, OK, we do know that there, there's a lot available in OER databases, a lot of resources available specifically for general education courses. And then there are professors who are teaching those general education courses and they have no idea that those resources are there just waiting to be adopted and they're good quality resources and all of that. So this particular objective from one of the teams really targeted that just saying, let's take something that we already have, something that is already really great about OER. And there's a lot of great stuff just wait, sitting and waiting there to be adopted and let's target that. Um, and then to um, support that, the strategy and tactics, that is, you know, how do we, how are we going to get there? One of the examples, for example, here is um, they suggested personalized emails that were created specifically for faculty teaching general education courses. So this approach of personalization and really um, um, emphasizing that to faculty was suggested by students. Now, when it comes to strategies and tactics, in particular tactics, students didn't just suggest things, they also um, designed tactics. So for example, for emails, they wrote those emails, they wrote template emails. So right now OER team has all that stuff and it can be used perhaps with slight edits and, and modifications, but they've actually created the, the tactics. Uh, next slide. And you know, email isn't a very good visual. So I included a couple other examples here. So one here, you can see a student testimonial. This was one other team that was suggesting um, social media to engage student audiences. Uh, well, faculty too, faculty are also using social media, just maybe different ones um, and, and, and in different ways. But one of the things that they suggested was uh, to do student testimonials. And this is a real one. This is an actual student and, and an actual testimonial. So uh, that was one thing that they designed and suggested uh, as a post on social media. And another example here is the um, newsletter. So one of the teams uh, suggested a series of myth busting newsletters. So they've identified those myths that based on the existing research that people typically have about OER and each newsletter in those series was aimed serious was aimed at addressing and busting uh, one myth at, at a time about OER. So this was an example. This is an example of a newsletter that they've designed. Next slide. 
So in addition to developing, to suggesting and also developing all the tactics, students also for every campaign that they've designed, each team developed a budget, a full budget, an implementation schedule, which is basically like a timeline of when what should be happening. So when the social media posts should go out, when the email should go out, when the newsletter should be sent out. So all of that was mapped out on, on the timeline or on the schedule. And then they've also developed evaluation recommendations. So when the campaign is over, if OER team were to adopt it and actually go with it, how would they go about evaluating its effectiveness? So that students developed as well. So I just gave a few examples just to illustrate um, uh, the, the key points about you know, what specifically students did. But Michelle is going to go into more detail about kind of give you a more comprehensive overview of overall what were students' suggestions. So she's going to go a little deeper into that. Okay, thank you. Um, so as uh, Anna said, um, you know, we worked with the class uh, through a series of class meetings, as well as communication in between meetings and so on. And so she gave you a good overview of, of uh, what, what the class actually uh, did in terms of activities. As she said, there were four groups. And so for this next part of the, the presentation, I've tried to kind of summarize and, and because, you know, some of the things were very similar between the groups. Um, so I've tried to kind of summarize what the recommendations were so uh, so first of all as far as the target audiences um, the what they identified as target audiences were essentially what what Sarah mentioned earlier on um, were you know kind of the same idea that we had faculty um, in particular they did they pulled that out a little bit um, down to instructors of general education classes um, so a getting a little bit more granular on that one students and in particular they also kind of emphasized undergraduate students so students in general um, but really kind of emphasizing uh, undergraduates more than more than graduates and also college deans as a um, as a target uh, audience for for some of the messages we do have nine academic colleges here at Western and so um, the the deans of each of those um, colleges were one of the target audiences that they identified um, next slide please so kind of the themes that rose um, again I'm, I'm summarizing here because there was a lot of of uh, more specific um, messaging, but in terms of overall themes, um, affordability really was, you know, the you know the fact that that you know students um, are you know struggling financially, and so you know one of the huge advantages of um, OER is this affordability piece. So that was really one of the um, one of the the themes that was emphasized. Um, accessibility was another theme that was emphasized, um, especially in terms of the fact that these are digital. You don't have to wait, you know, for it to come in the mail. You don't have to go to the bookstore. Um, it's accessible as soon as the class starts or even before the class starts, um, and you know, anytime, anywhere. So that's that sort of of message um, and uh, promotion of the grant program. So we already had the grant program in place. Um, and, you know, that was definitely one of the themes that they emphasized in terms of, um, you know, getting getting the word out about the grant program and increasing the um, the um, applications to the grant program. Um, so, you know, there were, there were, as I said, there were a lot of other, um, you know, things that were talked about. These, these are kind of the ones that, that rose to the top. Um, equity, social justice, sustainability kinds of um, topics were certainly things we talked about um, and certainly things that made it in, in, in part into some of the things they recommended, um, but didn't, didn't really rise to the top as far as, as the, the themes that they emphasized. Um, next slide, please. Um, so as far as some of the individual strategies and tactics um, that they recommended. So again, so we were presented with the four campaign books. So each, um, and, and Anna showed you um, some of the, uh, you know, pieces that they developed. Um, so in terms of, of uh, overall, and, and they also did the, the presentations, but in terms of the the recommended kind of strategies and tactics. Um, mass emails to faculty was one of the things that they uh, recommended in a number of different ways. Um, some of the groups did suggest making sure that the emails come from the dean level or the provost level, um, so they're more likely to be paid attention to and, and not dismissed if they come from the library or they come from um, you know, somebody that the, the faculty member is not familiar with. So, um, so mass emails to faculty of a variety of different pieces of information, um, including things like announcements, you know, if we do workshops or, uh, or you know, other kinds of events, um, 
course, you know, anything having to do with the grant. Um, Anna showed you um, one of the pieces of uh, like a newsletter. So one of the groups recommended, a, a, I think it was a weekly newsletter um, with individual um, pieces of information um, that would go into like the, the myth busting um, kind of theme that would go in. Um, uh, also, uh, one, another one that I thought was kind of helpful was the, um, you know, kind of challenges to faculty. So a, an email that would say, hey, why don't, you know, rather than adopting an OER as the textbook for your class, how about just one assignment, you know, so they were, you know, sort of just kind of tech tips and, and suggestions and challenges, um, but going out in, in uh, as mass emails uh, to faculty. Um, press releases, and again, as, as Anna showed you, they actually wrote these out, but they were press releases um, recommended in terms of, um, you know, the grant process, any workshops that would come up, um, and other kinds of events. Print flyers, and, you know, we have to say this was one of the things we were a bit surprised about, was, you know, we kind of didn't think this generation was so into print flyers, but they did really um, recommend um, a number of things um, in print, so posters and infographics, and again, they developed a lot of these things, like the, the testimonials and um, things that you saw, but they actually did recommend, you know, printing these things out, sending them into, into departments, you know, posting them in um, classroom buildings, in offices, and so on. Um, and um, a future story in the news media. So they, they actually wrote out um, a future story that had to do with a, uh, one, of the, one of the grant winners um, who had adapted his course and there were some interviews with some of the students in the course and, and so on. So that was um, a story that would be, they recommended that we would put out in, in our local news uh, media. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so a few more um, social media and, it, you know, kind of the, we were, we were surprised that they, um, there was as much emphasis as there was on print media and we were kind of, this was sort of the flip side of that one, is that they did, they did certainly recommend social media, but it was a little bit lighter, I guess, than we were expecting um, in terms of, so they had, you know, they did have those pieces that they developed that they recommended could be put out. Um, on our social media channels or the university social media channels. Um, but I wouldn't say that that was as much of an emphasis as um, some of the other things. Um, and um, developing student advocates. So they did recommend, um, you know, kind of arming a group of students um, or, or educating a group of students with, you know, something like an elevator speech that they could then approach a faculty member and say, hey, by the way, did you know about OER? This is how it works. Um, as well as individual emails to faculty. So, um, you know, of informational pieces that would be personalized to the faculty member from the student saying, hey, by the way, you know, in my other class, we use this OER and it worked out great. Um, so as a, as a channel to, um, you know, to, uh, to make those students prepared to be able to approach their, their faculty members. Um, next slide, please. Um, so uh, a couple more recommendations, uh, student testimonial videos. So you saw that little um, uh, print piece of a testimonial, but they actually, they did develop um, even like interview scripts so that we could maybe pull some students and interview for that, interview them, how they did in a class, what they thought about the OER that they used, how, it, you know, the fact that they didn't have to pay for it, how did that affect them? Um, so they, they, did, um, they did come up with an interview script and some suggestions as to where we could film them and, and things like that. Um, and uh, t-shirts they recommended and they actually designed a t-shirt that was in the appendix, appendices of one, appendix of one of the um, campaign books. So a t-shirt that would promote OER at WMU. Um, and again, another one that was a bit surprising to us was, um, but was tabling at student fairs and events. We do have a number of, um, you know, usually in-person events um, for students. The, something called Bronco Bash is something that happens in the fall, um, right at the beginning of class, uh, right at the beginning of the semester. And they recommended that we, you know, have students wear the t-shirts and stand at the tables and hand out, um, you know, pens and various other kinds of giveaways um, promoting OER. Uh, next slide, please. So as far as some, you know, kind of overall conclusions and kind of what we got out of it, what we learned, um, additional data. So as Anna said, they did, you know, they, they surveyed students, um, they interviewed people. And so all of that is really good information that we can use um, to, you know, investigate a little bit further and, and to help inform um, our marketing, uh, you know, plan from here on. 
Um, another thing that I think was really helpful was that it, it, you know, working with the class and working with these individual students really allowed us to kind of check our messaging, um, the, the marketing that we've been doing and that we're considering doing to see um, what, you know, that target group of students, kind of what stuck and what didn't. So for instance, um, I mentioned the example of, you know, sustainability is, you know, kind of one of those things that we talked about, but didn't really make it into their final um, recommendations. So it just, you know, it really gave us, um, you know, a sense of what, what messages stick with this particular tar target group um, and which ones didn't really, you know, sink in so well. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of what they recommended was stuff we already had in our plan, stuff we were already doing. So that was kind of nice to see that they thought those were effective um, channels. So confirmation of what kind of what we had already been doing and and what we had um, in our plans to do, um, and. Um, we also gave us the opportunity to build messages with student champions. So these 20 students in the in the course of the semester learned a lot about OER um, and were you know persuaded about the um, the value of OER. And so now, even though they're they're primarily seniors, if they go into grad school or whatever um, their um, you know experiences in higher education from here on, they can they're they're now really good informed advocates. Um, for OER. Um, and also, you know, there were just some really innovative approaches and ideas that, you know, uh, that we hadn't really considered. So, um, so that was really, you know, and I also have to say, I don't have a bullet point for it, but just kind of the enthusiasm of the students is also nice, you know, for those of us who, um, you know, don't have as much, um, uh, you know, opportunity to, to work in a classroom with, with students. It was just really nice to um, you know, kind of just see their enthusiasm and um, and actually you know say the things we were hoping they would say in terms of um, the value of the of OER. Um, so then I'm gonna I'm gonna hand it over now to Sarah to kind of finish up and and talk about sort of where we're going from here um, and uh, what our plans are. Thanks, Michelle. So. Our next steps, I mean, as I've listed out here on the slide, I mean, it's pretty kind of straightforward, but at the same time, not. I mean, we have four really great campaign books to kind of pour over. And, you know, I don't know that any one team was perfect, you know, so we're going to have to kind of go through and pick out the pieces that are going to work for us. But um, in terms of what I can say right now, is the, the COM4500 team suggested several strategies that could really support the goals that we've identified to increase awareness of OER and the adoption grant. And I'm sure that the task force will be creating some new goals in the future as well. So some of what they've worked on could apply there too. The greatest, the strategies with the greatest potential, I think are targeting those general education courses and disciplines that have higher concentrations of existing OER. It just seems it, it's a really smart strategy to get information into the hands of people that can actually act on it or that might act on it. Um, our previous plan was much more broadly focused on awareness and that's really hard to measure. It's really hard to see impact on. So I think a more targeted approach to reach those specific um, segments of our faculty and instructor audience might lead to increased interest in adoption. So it's a great next step for our task force. Um, there were many ideas submitted, um, it, but some of the strategies and tactics were more actionable than others, both in terms of time, resources, and what would work at our institution. Um, so in addition to what we're already doing, a few tactics that uh, were suggested by the teams that might be implemented are developing those student advocates um, and rather than sort of trying to create a grassroots movement through event tabling events and flyers as was kind of suggested by some of the groups it, i think that the direction we'll go in is trying to leverage some existing relationships we have with student groups on campus specifically the western student association which is like the student government group on campus we've already presented to them we have a relationship with them and there is some turnover with the officers but um, they're already a group that plays an advocacy leadership role on campus. They have um, lines of communication to administration. And so it would be, I think, a, the next step in our relationship with them to maybe provide some training or talking points and actually start to build some student advocates within that group. Um, it's, I think it's something that we could do you know, pretty naturally. It's the natural evolution of the, where we're already at with them um, that would have really positive results. The other two um, tactics that were suggested by the groups was the idea of testimonials and feature stories. And the scripts and the um, stories that they've already created will be incredibly useful as we move 
forward with some tweaks to to kind of bring it into uh, position it to where we are right now. So both of those will be really useful, along with potentially the newsletter series as well. Although weekly might be a, a stretch uh, to to get to, um, just in terms of you know pacing. But I think that they had to, it was a great idea, and so there's a lot of great ideas in their plan that we kind of have to synthesize synthesize down into what's realistic for for our task force, our team, and what we can do with our resources. And then of course, once we have a new plan in place, we'll identify some metrics to measure our goals so we can continue to adjust course and measure our progress as the, the campaign rolls out. So we're really looking forward to creating a new marketing plan that incorporates some of these strategies and tactics from the COM4500 teams. And I think I'll turn it over for Q&A now to Beth. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone for participating. Um, so this is our time to um, turn to you if you have any questions for us or even any reflection or any discussion that you may have, or if you've done some partnering with um, classrooms uh, on campus regarding OER, if you wanted to share some thoughts. Thank you. So we do have one question that was submitted background slash guidance do students get about the library and or university branding requirements that may need to be met? Um, well, I can answer some of it. <laughs> so um, in terms of the branding requirements, we provided them with, um, you know, resources that the university provides in terms of logo, typography, color palette, etc. Um, and I believe that they're they had no problem finding those resources and using them. Um, and then in terms of guidance about the library, I think that really came through with the, um, the client meetings that we participated in. And I can add to that too a little bit. Um, yes, exactly what, what Sarah said. And that's why those, hence those meetings with the clients. Uh, I provide, so uh, the course structure gives an opportunity for at least those three initial informational meetings. The fourth one is kind of, you know, the final one is <laughs> to wait to ask questions <laughs> that will help design the campaign, but those three initial ones, uh, but also, uh, and Michelle was our primary contact, but uh, students are encouraged and they, and they use that uh, opportunity to also reach out email um, uh, via email and ask additional questions and ask for resources. And we've been doing that. I know several teams have reached out or I have reached out on their behalf uh, to Michelle and others on the team asking for additional information and that related to um, the uh, marketing guidelines and branding guidelines too. Mm -hmm. So another question, as far as open and able pedag pedagogy goes, do the students, oh, oh, hang on a second, that just disappeared. Um, as far as open and able pedagogy goes, did the students use OER resources to create their proposals? And is, was there consideration to publish the books under an open license for sharing? <laughs> Sure. Uh, no, that's a, <laughs> this is an interesting idea in terms of publishing. Um, uh, yeah, I would need to think about that for sure, how, how to go about it in terms of um, using. So there is no textbook in this course in COM 4500. Students don't pay anything. So everything that they use in terms of uh, like actual things that they read are are free um, and by the time they get to this class they've already they, they know everything they they know the elements of campaign planning and so this capstone is really about applying those skills so a lot of the readings that they i they still do um, and and rely on are a lot of them are refreshers from what they've seen before and a lot of them actually students do comment and say oh it was nice to you know read that that article about, about campaign planning elements or using social media for campaigns, again, because now it's a completely different perspective and now we get to apply it and use it. So um, yeah, I, the, the resources that I use currently in this class aren't necessarily 
OER in the sense of that they come from OER databases or anything like that. They're just um, they don't have to, they're not textbook. It's like a hodgepodge of, of different things. Um, but, but I have thought definitely of incorporating more straight up OER resources into the, um, into the, into this class. And like I said, I already did, uh, completely convert my other class introduction to public relations to OER. So I think this um, some elements of it is gonna are gonna go into this class as well. Thank you for this question. This is it gives some great ideas. Yes, great questions. Um, so that's all the questions I'm seeing submitted via the Q and A. Uh, we can pause for a minute to see if any of our attendees have any other additional quests, questions they would like to ask. We're getting some thanks for clarifications and information and recognition of how helpful and informative this session is. Well, as we wrap up here, um, I want to see if our presenters have any final thoughts or advice or recommendations they would like to share with the group today. No, I, I, I thought the whole experience was um just very eye-opening. It was interesting to see this perspective from the students and the campaigns that they came up with. Um, it was great to then develop, like Michelle said, you know, these 20 plus students who are now advocates for uh, OER, you know, whether they take that on to graduate school or, you know, keep promoting to other people on campus, you know, that's, that's just been wonderful. And, you know, we've really kind of, um, struggled getting the word out because like as I mentioned our first survey only had 45 participants and then the second one only had 75. So I think you know trying to uh, get the word out of just about OER more broadly on campus um, and then trying to promote uh, what we do not just the survey but also the, the, uh, the grant that we offer and um, any other programming that we do offer trying to drum up that um, you know, the, the attendance to those and the interest in that on campus. And um, so, yeah, it's been, it's been a great experience. Now, speaking of interest in this work, we did just get another question. What is publishing the student work openly for other colleges? Has that been considered at all for future renditions? I, I mean, well, Anna should answer that question, but I, um, I, I think that's a great idea. I mean, these are, you know, these are really, you know, things that we can certainly talk about, but I mean, for the class, we were just one client. So like the previous semester, I actually was involved with, with Anna's class um, through the um, Invisible Needs was the, the client that semester, which was the, it, which is a kind of our food pantry on campus. Um, so they developed campaigns for that too. Um, so I mean, I know she's had a variety of different clients, um, but I but yeah, you know, publishing the things openly. I'll I'll uh, be quiet here and let Anna take that one because that's I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and I there aren't really no restrictions there. So every campaign book it has student names on it, and uh, it's and in fact students actually that's that's another kind of perk of, of of doing it this way. You know, service learning, experiential education. They develop that campaign, and I tell them right away that uh, you will include that in your digital portfolio, professional portfolio, because these are PR students. They all have uh, online portfolios that they use in later in their career development in job searches and so on and so forth. So a lot of those campaigns are actually <laughs> online on their LinkedIn profiles or in their digital portfolios. There are no restrictions really in terms of sharing. So um, yeah, where that's, um, I don't know about the whole uh, kind of the, the technicalities of publishing it through certain channels, but there are no there are no restrictions on sharing uh, what students created those those campaign books. Um, yeah, I think we're we're happy to share those with um, if anyone is interested. So, in terms of sharing, what is the timeline for implementing some of the suggestions that students gave? 
you start uh, during the course? Or are there plans for the future? Oh, that's a great question. Um, we Well, right now the task force doesn't uh, have a timeline. We've gotten all of the campaigns in and we still have access to them. Um, I think uh, the, the task force, and Michelle, you can jump in here too. I think we plan to work with Sarah, uh, since Sarah's our marketing manager for the university libraries, to kind of develop what might work for us, whether those it's the newsletters or you know the emails or the testimonials or all of the above. Um, so I think it's really just a matter of uh, working, you know, working with Sarah, working through those book, uh, the campaign books, and kind of seeing what would work for us. I don't know, Michelle, if you wanted to add anything. Um, actually, I think Sarah would probably be better than than I would to <laughs> to add to that one. <laughs> I mean, we're uh, always tweaking our marketing. I mean, Sarah's yeah. you know, always on top of these things, but, but go ahead, Sarah, and answer that one. Yeah, I mean, in terms of timeline, we weren't able to implement during the course because the students were working on the campaign. So we didn't really even see their, their plans and, and, uh, until the finals, finals week, really. So there wasn't an opportunity to implement as they were developing. That being said, there was activity happening. So it was interesting to be rolling out, you know, promoting the OER online symposium at the same time as working with this class and sharing kind of live exactly what was working at the time saying, hey, guess what, e-learning, putting an announcement there really works. We got, you know, we track um, using uh, UTM tags, how many clicks a link has. And so we're actually able to see which tactics are working best. And um, I think that the biggest challenge in those client meetings was you know, wanting to be fair and give students the same information, but if they weren't asking the, the questions, you know, um, to, you know, how do you share that knowledge? Because I mean, I certainly had all the, the details, but I, you know, didn't want to unfairly, you know, way in one, one way or the other is what I'd say. So, um, but I agree with Beth, we have to, we have to do some work on our end in terms of making sure that um, the campaigns the pieces of the campaigns that we pick are gonna align with the overall goals for the task force. And I think that there's some work there that has to happen in terms of, you know, we focused on, like I said, awareness and promoting the grant, but is the grant changing? Is what are what else is coming down the road for the task force that we would need to be incorporated into a marketing campaign or a PR campaign? So, so our timeline's unknown. But this summer, I think is, if your institution is like any like ours, summer is great for planning. And so sometime this summer, we'll be um, creating those plans to hopefully roll out for the fall. Well, we are getting close to time. So to kind of wrap things up, um, we want to say thank you so much to our presenters, Sarah, Beth, Michelle, and Anna. We really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and experience with us today. Um, we also want to thank our audience for joining us. We want to remind you that today's webinar has been recorded and will be shared in the coming weeks, um, that you can subscribe to the YouTube playlist to receive notification, and that slides and transcripts will also be linked. And the link to that YouTube channel is in the chat. You can keep the conversation going on this wonderful presentation uh, via Slack, and I will drop the link to that into the chat as well. Um, if you are an OEN member, we hope you will also continue the conversation in the OEN Google group. My deepest thanks to everybody for um, attending today. And uh, does anybody from the OEN have any closing remarks before we wrap up? I think you did a great job, Carla. Thank you. And thank you presenters for joining us today. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you.